And now for something completely different. Instead of talking about a game, today I'm talking about a movie. One that is very weird. I'm going to warn you right off the bat, this is a very weird movie, and I do not say that lightly. This is indeed a very strange movie, and hopefully, if this video goes well, this won't be the only movie I talk about on this channel, but I am prepared for that to be the case, because today, I'll be taking a look at Man's Best Friend. A 1993 movie directed by the late John Lafia. Or Lafia? I'm not sure. But he was known for co-writing the first Child's Play, directing Child's Play 2, and directing some episodes for TV shows like Freddy's Nightmares and The Dead Zone. So yeah, he's dipped his feet into horror quite a bit to say the least, and it's with this movie, Man's Best Friend, that marks his first and only time being the writer and director for a horror film. Is that a good sign, or a bad sign, you might be wondering? Well, I would like you to decide for yourself. Let us not delay any longer, and reminisce on Man's Best Friend. So the movie starts off with the opening credits, showing off artwork that depicts dogs being kind, loyal, and loving. before descending into artwork depicting their ferocious primal nature. Then back to kind. Then back to mean. Then back to kind. Then back to mean. And then we fade onto the scene of a building labeled Emacs Research. And then, back to mean! <laughs> I'm just joking. Well, kinda. This building specializes in animal research, but it's less understanding how they tick and more Porky from Mother 3. One of the employees, Judy Sanders, is calling a reporter, Lori Tanner, about sneaking them into the establishment and documenting the heinous acts done on the animals. Look, I can sneak you into the lab tomorrow night if you still got that 500 you promised. Yeah, yeah. I just, I have to make sure you can get me in to see the animals. I gotta know exactly what's being done to them. Why don't you meet me at 8.30 at the North Gate and don't be late. I can't afford to get in trouble. I'll be there. Judy then goes on to do her job of looking after the animals while learning Spanish. That's a new one. How are you, Mrs. Perez? Como esta usted, señora Perez? Como esta usted, señora? She then finds a cage that's empty except for a beeping tracker. Thank you. Gracias. But then, Judy gets attacked by a wild camera! Well, there goes the cute employee trying to make ends meet. Goodbye. Adios. <laughs> nice one, movie. It's topical, it's hard hitting. I think I can do something significant with it. You know, do an expose. Who knows what goes on in that place? So, Lori is the kind of reporter that only gets the small jobs and wants to chase that big scoop that'll put her on the map. Her co worker, Annie, is just fine staying in the lane that they were given, but gets dragged along to help regardless. Just shoot the story and blow their socks off with it. I'm doing this with or without you. Lori tries to call, but since Judy was eaten by a monster, she can't exactly make it to the phone. Still determined, Lori gets ready to sneak it to Emacs without help from the inside, with Annie reluctantly helping. Wait, wait for me. Using the power of dumb luck and two waste disposal goobers needing to go back for more bloodied animal carcasses to throw out, Lori and Annie infiltrate Emacs and make their way to where the animals are being held. And it's not a pretty sight. Look, they took her ear off. I can get the name of this monkey. Okay, stay out of the shop. These people 
are sick. Look at her head. And the tattoo on her face, too. This is unbelievable. They soon find the bluntly named Special Projects room where they find tigers, tigers, and bears. Oh my. I can't believe they're experimenting on endangered species like these. Hmm. Maybe Porky wasn't a good enough comparison. Maybe Umbrella's better, especially with them being so proud of their evil deeds that they labeled the rooms where they experiment and mutate animals. Speaking of experimental animals... Rare. Extinct. Dog. They find Max, an absolute unit of a dog that's wired to a beeping device. One that Lori starts cutting wires on and somehow doesn't lead to the whole place going up in a great big... Spoken friend? Yeah, why? I want to do the intro to the story. Getting greedy, are we? You know, you can only get lucky but so long until... Something goes wrong. They seek a way out. But end up running into the head honcho. Jesus. What the hell are you doing here? And it seems a certain someone wanted to follow them. Huh, that one always works. Max. 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 <laughs> oh, Max is a free dog now. Max. Running like their lives depend on it, Lori, Annie, and Max make a getaway, leaving Dr. Jarrett in their dust. So Dr. Jarrett calls the police about Max getting stolen, and after playing the I do genetic research on animals to save lives card, a card you really gotta dig in your deck to find, they say that they'll we'll be in touch. and go on their way. Meanwhile, Lori and Annie are leaving a grocery store when suddenly Give me your purse. Okay. Give it to me! Thanks. You two bitch, give me the watch! Okay, okay! You got any tools? Don't. You wanna watch me mock? Oh. Woof! I love that face. He's like, oh no, you didn't just woof me. I'm gonna rip his face off. Just don't ask what happened to the mugger. So they take Max home, and after playing with him, and finding scars and markings on him, vow to protect him no matter what. The thing is, Max is very affectionate towards Lori, which probably isn't going to go over well with Lori's boyfriend. What the hell's going on? What's that dog? Annie and I were attacked in the parking lot of the market tonight. This dog was in the parking lot. He chased the guy off, and then he went and got my purse and brought it back for me. He's a great guard dog. Great no, guard no, dog. No, no, we're not keeping this dog. Yeah. No, Lori, no. I, look, why? He's Forget here. it. I don't even know what kind of home No he, dog! I don't even know if he has a home. Why no do try Oh, he's one of those types of boyfriends. Joy. If he stays, he stays in the backyard. I don't want him running around the house loose. So Max can stay, but because of Perry, that's the name of the boyfriend by the way, Max has to stay outdoors. Perry makes Lori stop doing her work before bed because he's ready to give her a bone of his own. But Lori wants to check on Max because of all the noise he's making outside. It's gonna be too long, alright? <laughs> what a dork. Oh, you, why are you making so much noise? So yeah, Max already misses Lori, and puts on the adorable charm so she'll let him sleep inside. Perry attempts to bone down with Lori again, but Max unveils what exactly is so special about him. He has Zoom and Enhance built straight into his irises, and Max doesn't like what he sees. <laughs> Nice voice crack, my man. 
So the next day, the cops bring Dr. Jared in to look at some of their suspects, and none of them are the girls he's looking for. He also explains why he's so adamant about getting Max back. I've given a dangerous and experimental animal a neuropathic drug to keep him stable. When that drug wears off, he is gonna snap. Hey, 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 don't do that kind of shit in here! Wow, that cop in the back was ready to shoot this man even though he wasn't black. I guess racial equality came sooner than we expected. Hey, where are you going? We're not done. We're not talking about man's best friend here. <laughs> Sorry, <dude. laughs> That kid's in danger. Unfortunately, Lori's call for breakfast stops Max from mauling the paper boy, and we cut from that to another boy roller skating into Lori's house. Hey, Lori. Woody, how you doing? I'm doing fine, but I'm starving. What are you making? Sometimes I forget there are those neighborhoods out there where everyone knows everyone and nothing bad ever happens, so people don't even see the point in locking the door. Wow. Where'd you get the dog? That's his name. Max. Hey, Max. Wanna come in? Come in. Hey, don't let me get my pizza. He's not allowed in the house. Can I bring him over to my house to meet Heidi? Does that sound like fun? He's so cute. <laughs> All right, hand me his leash. So Lori hands Max over to the neighbor boy for a day out of the backyard. Oh, hi, doggy. You want to help me fix this thing? You could go over and get that brake line if you wanted to. <laughs> Oh no, Perry is realizing that the dog's smarter than him. Oh no, too, electric flirtaloo. I think Max just found his side chick. Back at again at Krispy Kreme, the cops get a report of a missing person, Judy, the poor girl that got eaten by a mom. And despite the fact that Dr. Jared is being pretty dismissive about a missing employee, her uh, husband says she left for work that morning. Well, she never arrived. That's all I know. What about my dog? They don't immediately bring him in for questioning. Good thing too, because it's here where we get our exposition dump. Basically. All of the animals at Emacs were used to be genetically spliced with a dog, giving him enhanced speed, strength, dexterity, and several special traits that only belong to certain animals to make a genetically engineered super dog. What I am trying to tell you is that in the right hands, Max can save thousands of lives. In the wrong hands, he can be a deadly weapon. Don't you think you're being overdramatic, Doctor? What wrong hands could that dog possibly- Oh. Look, there's Miss Barkley's stupid cat, Boo. I hate that dumb cat. He always tries to scratch me. Me too. Get him, Max! Sick him! Come on! <laughs> I don't think this is gonna end well for that cat. I want you to partake in a little thought experiment with me. Be me. Be around 14 or 15 or so, have direct TV so you get tons of movie channels and such, uh, be in the middle of some channel surfing trying to find something to watch, and you tune into a channel where a dog uh, extends his claws to climb up a tree, catching up to a cat, and proceeding to swallow it whole. That is how I first learned that this movie even existed, and now I am here before you all. 
to let it be known that this is a movie in which a dog vores a cat, and we are only, only 39 minutes into this movie. Never say I don't warn you about things for a reason. So Perry gets horny in view of Max again. Max gets jealous, so he cuts the new brake lines Perry got on his car in hopes of getting rid of him for good. But Lori has to go to work, so Max can't increase that social link rank while the boyfriend's away. Luckily, he's got another social link to start on, and, uh... And they called it a bill. Uh, Max, I think you're going a little too forward here. Max, there's a whole ten ranks you have to go through first. Uh, Max! <laughs> Max just assaulted the neighbor's dog. I don't know what's more concerning about that. The fact that it even happened, the fact that they played puppy love over it, or the fact that it's only five minutes apart from the cat vor scene. I've honestly sat here for a couple days wondering how to continue this script after something like this, and I guess I just have to simply go, that was definitely a scene, and just move on. Move on to Max unveiling another move in his set. My super laser pass! Yeah, I'm not sure which animal gave him acid urine, but uh, that's a thing he also has. File that for later. Meanwhile, the cops come across the body of the mugger Max mauled. Get a hold of Jared. I want him to look at this. You won't be mugging anybody no more, pal. And Dr. Jared finds this to be a good thing, as he views it as Max cleaning filth off the streets. The cops don't see it the same way, which I don't get, because they probably shot five black people on the way over to this crime scene, so maybe they shouldn't act so high and mighty. Max doesn't deserve a bullet. He deserves a medal. Either way, Dr. Jared is preparing all his tools to subdue Max before it's too late. And when is it too late? Five hours, 29 minutes, and 14 seconds. And the minimum? The minimum time has already expired. <laughs> That's probably not good. And I have a feeling this mailman is going to see for himself how not good it is. You must be new in the neighborhood. I think it's time we met. Especially when he tries to mace a super dog. Meanwhile, a worker at Emacs finds something. It's a tape that Annie dropped when Lori and her were making their daring escape. And unfortunately, it happens to be the one that's labeled, leading the doctor to make a house call. Lori slips out and decides that she's gotta find some place to hide Max. Meanwhile, Perry, not taking too kindly to having his brake lines cut, decides to serve up a delicious rat poison burger. Eat the food, Max. But, uh, you can tell that wasn't gonna work. Back at the news station, after being asked to leave, Dr. Jarrett trink darts a security guard and slips back in because they only have the one guard, I guess and finds the editing room where the footage of Emacs is playing and doesn't destroy it or anything. He just watches it like he forgot what he planned to do, if he even had a plan besides asking for his dog back. So Lori finds a place to give Max to, and he seems nice at first. Come get it. Come get it. You're a big dog. Handsome, too. Aren't you? I bet you get all the girls. Huh? So where would Max live exactly? Well, not here. 
that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a big ranch with about 15 acres out in Shadow Hills. My dog Wayne used to love it out there. But of course. <laughs> I said settle down, you worthless piece of dog shit. Yeah, he's gonna die. What's the matter, boy? Don't you like my ranch? <laughs> oh, he's really gonna die. <laughs> Something tells me he's gonna get the worst death out of all of them. Oh my lord. Let's watch that again in slow motion. <laughs> now that is some good schadenfreude. Meanwhile, Annie heads back to the editing room to find out that the doctor is in. Remember me? Oh, thank goodness someone came back here. I was worried this was a waste of time. Anyway, where's my dog? And after walking all the way back home, Max finds that he's already been replaced with a new dog, Spike. Spike? Yeah, he acts like a Spike. He's not even part dragon. Look, you went after me first, Max, okay? And I went after you so we get this quality. Okay, and we can be friends. That's not how it works, my guy. That's right, this is what you get! My super laser fan! And suddenly, it's all kicking off. The cops show up, the neighbor kid tries to hit a home run and gets gutterballed. The cops shoot in a residential area trying to hit Max, so... Let's be honest, nothing abnormal there. The cops give chase, Max shows that he truly is a super dog by leaping over cars. Some dog catchers chase Max to a random garage only to have the door closed on them, see Max go chameleon, and are allowed to run out screaming. And all of that happened in like, three minutes! This movie has the pacing of a rabbit with anxiety! But yeah, they haul off P-Face Perry to the ER, and Lori gets asked to stay with the cops keeping guard in case Max comes back. Cause I got a hunch he's coming back here to you. I'll do whatever I can to help. I'm sorry. All right, all right, all right. Sit tight. We'll take care of everything. And that goes about as well as you think it does. Later that night, Cop One finds that Max buried the mailman under the house. And Cop Two. Get in. I'm guessing Cop 2 got killed by Max off-screen and Dr. Jarrett just got super lucky with his timing, otherwise Max isn't the only killer animal around here. Max gives chase all the way back to Emax before climbing on top of the car and going for the dock. Oh yeah, they're fine. See, even the puppy made it. Oh yeah, and Max too. So Lori gets chased through Emacs, and it's only after playing cat and mouse for a while that Lori remembers. Oh yeah. Max likes me. Aw, uh, all's well that ends I got a shotgun. All right. Probably shouldn't have left him alone in the car. Get away from my dog. Get away from him. Uh, no! I got a shotgun. No! Ooh, and Spike with the assist. But yeah, that's the end of Max. Or is it? Lord, Lord, come here, you gotta come see this. Come on, okay? Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> yep, the neighbor's dog from earlier had puppies. So that's four potential super dogs, with one of them looking a lot like the father. The end. 
So that was Man's Best Friend. I told you this movie was weird, but it's pretty amazing. While your mileage may vary on the horror elements, the abundance of dark comedy is pretty enjoyable for the most part, and chances are if you made it this far in the video, you found it fascinating or enjoyable enough to keep watching me gab over it. But I'll tell you who didn't enjoy this movie, the critics. <laughs> Once again reminding me of why I no longer take critics word as gospel. Because again, besides that one part, this is a darkly hilarious and enjoyably silly killer dog movie. One that you can definitely see coming from the same person with a major hand in the first two child's plays. Speaking of which, I mentioned at the beginning that this was John Lafayette's first and only horror film that he's directed and written. Well, it's also technically his last theatrical film, and I say technically because he did work on an interactive film called Bombmeister, a movie about a serial killer clown whose hideout is rigged with tons of traps and explosives, and you're supposed to guide this investigation team through this fun land of gunpowder without everyone going out with a bang. However, due to the distribution company Interfilm Technologies apparently going bankrupt, the film was never, and has never, been released to this day. Only a trailer can be found on the internet, which by all accounts, means that this movie is lost media. Sounds like a case for blaming on Jorge. But yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that John's last movie was received so poorly, and that his next directing gig right afterwards just goes up in smoke. I don't want to get too depressing or conspiracy theorist about this because yeah, the man committed suicide two years ago. Clearly he was fighting a battle not many people, if any, were aware of. But it can't feel good to make something you wanted to make and be told it was garbage or be told that it was, and I quote, an atrocious movie, abysmal, everybody was terrible, even the dog was terrible, which is just... Going over the line, I don't even like dogs and I think that's being too mean. All I'm gonna say though is that I hope Mr. Lafia has found peace wherever he is in the afterlife. And I hope that this video wasn't seen as me adding on to the ridicule or anything. I legitimately like this movie and just wanted to share my thoughts on it, but... By the way, I thank all of you so much for watching this video. I'm sorry for getting a little, you know, bit sad at the end there. But hey, if there's nothing else you can take from this video, just remember that I showed you a movie in which a dog vores a cat. And yeah, that is... that is certainly something. Thank you all so much for watching. Be safe out there. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.